as I traveled and looked at my own life, perhaps my old motto would have been, more is better. People in the developing countries have nothing, so they reach out for God because God is the only thing they've got. And yet they've found true peace. They found the peace that only He can give. The world is in such need of mercy. Mercy is love that seeks to lessen the misery of others. I began the Eucharistic Apostles of the Divine Mercy because I had experienced divine mercy in my own life and I wanted to share this great gift of God's divine mercy with others. We are a lay outreach ministry of the Congregation of Marians of the Immaculate Conception based in Stockbridge, Massachusetts. We work out of a modest office in Tampa and we concentrate on assisting our lay evangelists, our missionaries who travel the country speaking on divine mercy in the Eucharist. We send out booklets and other religious items and help people to understand the beauty of the message of Divine Mercy by forming prayer groups or our Divine Mercy Cynicals. One of the fruits of the Cynicals is, of course, spiritual growth and people see who they really are and yet understand how much God loves them right where they're at and to accept His mercy and His love for them. We send out our containers to the poorest of the poor worldwide and we spread Divine Mercy through our materials and try and get people to understand that this message is a way of life. Everyone can extend God's mercy wherever they are each day. The chaplet originated from a vision that St. Faustina had where the angel of wrath was ready to strike the earth and she began to pray hoping that the angel of wrath wouldn't strike the earth for all of its sins and nothing, her prayers had no effect. Then in her soul she heard the words of the chaplet. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. As she began to recite this, the angel of wrath stood helpless. The message of divine mercy is nothing new. It's a reiteration of sacred scripture, but it's a time for now because the world is in such need of mercy. Forgiveness is a key element in the message of divine mercy. Eternal Father, we live in a critical time today. I think there's sometimes people get off track. Uh, it's an important message that the world needs today, that uh, this, this message of mercy, that God is willing in any circumstance to forgive us for our sins and to help us in the journey to get to Him. So many in, in our world today that have, have uh, you know, done so, so much bad, so many bad things that they feel like they, they're not good enough to uh, come to church, to come to God, uh, abortion, you know, whatever. They feel like, I, I'm just, God, there's no way God could love me because I've done, I've turned away from Him and I've done so much bad. But the message of the divine mercy is, in fact, the words of Jesus, the greater the sinner, the more right he has to my mercy. Christ condemns no one. People upon reflection looking at their life in toto, uh, those who do not know the mercy of God in life, many do not know the mercy of God in death as well. So they commit themselves based on what they've seen of their life. All we need to do is to ask him for forgiveness or to be forgiving to our brothers and our sisters and then he will then in turn be forgiving to us. Tell the world that the greatest sinner has the greatest right to my mercy. Listen to those words. Listen to the invitation. That means whoever feels that they are the most unloved, the most undeserving of God's mercy and grace have the greatest right to it. They come first. And on the whole world, eternal Father, 
that's what we are to be, instruments of mercy to one another. When you receive that, you receive a natural impetus to go out and live mercy. One has to follow the other. If God is in you, you're going to be compelled to serve the needs of the neediest. The message of Divine Mercy that we've helped to develop in the laity particularly is this understanding of the demands of our Lord, the commands of loving one another in His name, and what this means in corporal and spiritual works of mercy. When our Lord spoke to St. Faustina about the image of the Divine Mercy, uh, He said, yes, it's to be venerated. That means shown special religious respect, but it is to be especially a reminder of the deeds of mercy that are expected from all Christians. Because, and he quoted the words of St. James, faith without works is dead. One of the ways in Tampa that we spread divine mercy is to send out containers, uh, large amounts of items to the poorest of the poor worldwide. And we send out a truckload about every six to eight weeks of donated items. As we travel the world to countries like Nigeria and Ecuador and Ukraine, we speak to the local people and assess their needs. We speak to the priests and the bishops and by listening to the locals, we are able to fill the containers in a way that meets their basic human needs. To people that don't have any of this, this is pure gold and it's amazing because these are things that we would just discard in this country. I would like to ask uh, people in countries like U.S. and other countries which are advanced to stop wasting things. There is a very high wastage of things. People uh, have so much and they consume so much and then they lose so much. That way God is not happy. Through the works of mercy, we get out of ourselves. We step out of our what's in it for me and we reach out to others and we find great joy. Eternal Father. Most people will respond more to how we love. I uh, had a very successful career in secular radio. As I got older, I started thinking about uh, what I was um, leaving as a legacy, you might say, to my family, my children especially. We all have a ministry housewives, doctors, radio people, policemen, firemen, whatever. We are living witnesses to the mercy that Jesus has shown us. When you can touch a person and affect their life, uh, even in the short term, it gives you a satisfaction. If it's just a public service announcement, running an um, uh, anti-abortion type public service announcement. And everything that I do in the media of, of radio, I try to show God that I appreciate the mercy that His Son has given to me. We want people, when they look in our eyes, to see the face of Jesus. And we need to look at people and see the face of Jesus in them as well. Have mercy on us and on the, whole the hour of death is the most important time in a person's life. It's the last hour of your life. It's the last opportunity that Satan has to grant you the, the despair. It's the last opportunity you have of asking for God's mercy. According to the revelations received by St. Maria Faustina, our Lord especially recommended that the chaplet be prayed near the dying. And he said, um, when this chaplet is said near the dying, I will stand between the dying person and my father, not as a just judge, but as a merciful savior. We as an organization have received a papal blessing from Pope John Paul II as an outreach ministry. We also have received a separate apostolic blessing for each and every perpetual adoration chapel who throughout the world will pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every hour. People often ask me, is it that simple that we can recite the Chaplet of Divine Mercy for the second dying and affect the mercy of God? Yes, it is that simple. Remember that God is always greater than evil. As great as the evil in the world may be at this moment, this is the moment Christ has chosen to grant the Divine Mercy Chaplet for the sick and dying to all souls. Father, uh, my name is Bill Andrew. This is my wife, Carol. She has late-stage Alzheimer's disease. We really got hooked on the Divine Mercy. 
Uh, it's become a way of life with Carol and I. As a person with Alzheimer's gets uh, older with the disease and the disease progresses, they revert back to oh. what the child started with way back when. We have been married in August. We celebrated our uh, 50th golden, or 50th wedding anniversary, our golden, yeah, 50 years with the same man, right. Our golden wedding anniversary, which is a major accomplishment considering where we were a number of years ago, wondering what the progress of Alzheimer's would be. I think from a perspective of how the Divine Mercy helped me, is that it's constantly in our prayer life. Uh, a day doesn't go by that we don't say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, the divine mercy, I love you. I trust in you. Uh, it's those little prayers. Ah, oh, you're sweet. Yes, and you're sweet too. <laughs> and we pray the chaplet every day, right? It gives you the strength. It gives you the inner strength in order to carry on, to be able to do the things that you know have to be done. She needs the support constantly. And that's where many, many times, because of the situation that you're involved in, you need to say, you know, Jesus, help me. <laughs> right. It is a way of the cross. It is a way of of uh, uh, doing penance, going back to September 11th and the tragedies, uh, that now we can pray in public. People fly the flag. People are friendly. They're doing things for each other. And if this isn't an opportunity for mercy, and there isn't any, this is the opportunity. Right, Carol? You think so? Yep. Yep. I really do. The divine mercy for me has been an answer to prayer. I had no hope. To me, it was the unforgivable sin to have not one, but two abortions. And when I said those words, Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And at that moment, I knew my babies were alive. I believed in the resurrection as I never had before. I understood that resurrection life was for everyone. The sacrifice was for everyone. I knew the Father could not refuse this prayer because he was willing to give his son. I went and I took the sacraments and was able to confess. And as I was able to confess the, the abortions, I felt a tremendous weight being lifted. And as I walked out of the confessional, everything was brighter. Every, the trees, the sky, the colors. I realized how my eyes had been veiled from just the weight of the sin. I knew immediately that God was calling me to share this prayer, to spread this prayer. I believe in that body and blood. I believe in that sacrifice. He left it for us. It's here to, to feed us. And as we come together, God is calling us to find out who we are within the framework of the body of Christ. What is it we're supposed to be giving? What is it we're supposed to be doing? Have mercy on us and on the whole world. The God is calling us right now, right where we are, meager, wealthy, gifted, whatever it is that you have to add, he's asking us to give it, to give it now, because now is the time that it's needed. The world needs mercy now. The world needs action now.
uh, there'll be no perfection this side of the grave in anyone, in any religion. People are in pain, they're broken, everyone's looking for answers, regardless of their belief structure. Uh, the message of mercy and love, of what Christ is talking about, is in front of all people. They have to make a decision. The worldly things can be wiped out in just an instant. And what the Lord has given us, He has laid out to us a blueprint for living today, living His mercy. People are still searching. And when they see the joy and happiness that could be in a Christian's life who spreads the message of divine mercy, um, that would definitely attract them to that message. I believe Dr. Thatcher does that. Even other denominations, the message of divine mercy is for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. His love and mercy is for everyone. There are many people throughout the world who have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ, but he died for every one of them. His blood was shed for all of us. So we need to be the hands and the feet and the heart of Jesus. We need to be the examples in the family and in the workplace. That will transform the world.